excuse me. <laughs> Tried to get that yawn out before it started, but you caught me. Uh, good evening, everyone. We're going to work on some chubby bunnies tonight. How's everybody doing? As you're jumping on, give me the hashtag live if you see that little red button over there. And of course, it's a hashtag replay if you don't see that. Feel free to jump in on the conversation either way. I love chit-chatting with you guys. And I do go back and uh, re-watch. So I still, like, I still like chatting with you even on the replay. So uh, I am Angie, the Shabby Chic Vintage Chick. And tonight we're working on some chubby bunnies. Who's getting ready for Easter and spring decor? Anybody? We got anybody out there how about you just let me know can you hear me okay <laughs> quite often I've gone live and people can't hear me so if you can hear me let me know hi Cheryl hi Julia Ju I can't say it Julie I just can't say Julie Lynn it doesn't come out right <laughs> I've called you Julie for so long hi Marilyn hi Lisa how's everybody doing all right so I've gone ahead and I've done a couple things and I'm gonna explain this as I'm doing this, I went ahead and I sanded my edges of this chubby bunny. So you can see he's pretty pale. He's pretty even. And I just lightly took my old sander. And you guys know I've been using the same piece of sandpaper forever. But I kind of sanded my edges because on this one I want some crisp lines. And if you don't do that, you kind of got that, that smoky residue that comes to you through from the laser and sometimes it kind of like it ages the piece it looks good but I'm looking for something a little more crisper okay so you're just starting to work on Easter I know it's so exciting though it's like a little early but I just can't control myself it's too much fun so what I did is I just took my sandpaper and let's see this guy here is pretty light you can see the little smoky residue on that edge there so all it is, is just a very light sanding. Just to knock that, that bit of residue off. This piece I'm looking to be a little more vibrant and a little less aged. But if you like the, the vintage look, you can just go ahead and paint right over that. And it kind of gives it that aged edge to it, okay? So, one of these bunnies we're going to paint. And the other one we're actually going to decoupage. So this one here that I sanded down, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint him with a white. I'm using Simplicity tonight. We're getting close to the end of my jar. Um, it's getting really thick. And uh, so I want to use it up. But any white would do when it's going underneath the napkin, okay? So to start off with, let's see which brush I want to use. I'm going to grab a nice flat brush and my spritzer bottle. I swore I had everything ready. Oh, there it is right in front of me. I'm gonna give my brush a little spritz of water. It helps the chalk paint go on a little smoother. And like I said, my white is getting pretty thick, so it definitely needs that touch of water. So what's everybody been up to today? Are we having a good day? Have we been creative today? Have we been working today and we're just looking to unwind? What's everybody up to? So I'm trying not to get any drips down the edges, but if they do, it's okay. I can just take a little bit of sandpaper at the end and just kind of clean up my edges. Sometimes even a baby wipe will just knock it off. Like there's a little drip right there, but that's okay. So the reason I paint before I decoupage is because I want it to kind of keep that napkin nice and vibrant. Otherwise, it's going to dull it down because of the wood tone underneath. So the brighter the color that you put underneath, the crisper, the white, something like that, you're really going to get that vibrancy of your napkin that's going to show through. Hi, Christine. Ugh, snow. Ugh. We had a little bit. We had freezing rain this morning. Then it cleared up and it was quite nice. And then this evening we got snow again, but nothing really major. So I'm kind of happy about that. The less of that we have now, the better. I am so over winter. 
but I'm sure all of you are feeling the same way. We're ready for the tulips and the crocus and all the prettiness to start coming out. Some green grass would be amazing. Not that I'm looking forward to cutting grass, but I sure would like to see it. I am looking forward to the smell of fresh cut grass. Is that weird? <laughs> I do love that. If you have any questions as we go, feel free to pop them in the comments. So these chubby bunnies, when we made these, um, we didn't come up with the design. It was someone else's design. But when I cut them out, I was quite excited because it's really something that could be finished off in so many different ways. So I love it when you guys do our projects and then you share pics with me. Because I love to see how different we all come up with ideas for them. So that's why tonight I'm going with two different ideas. One's going to be a painted bunny and one's going to be decoupage, just to show you the versatility of them. Did three short crafting lives today? Oh my goodness, you were busy. Oh, and you're getting ready for your lives tomorrow. Wow. You must be feeling a bit better. You're putting me to shame. <laughs> I was having a sluggish day today, I gotta admit. I was working on projects, but uh, like finishing up orders and stuff, but really just dragging my butt today. It just wasn't a excitable, um, full of energy day for me. <laughs> I don't know if it's the weather or what, but I was just, oh, I could have just crawled back into bed. I didn't, but I could have so easily. Okay, so that is my white one done. And I'm going to let him dry for a bit. I could dry him up quicker with the um, with the little dryer, but... Hi, sweet pea. You getting ready for bed? Yeah. Okay. Um, I could dry him up a little quicker with the dryer, but we have another bunny to work on, so I'm just going to jump on over to him. So he's going to be done in gray. This is Pebble Beach. It's kind of a nice light gray. And I'm also going to mix it with Darling. So Darling is a color that's kind of... It's really light. It's got gray to it, but it's kind of got a pinky tone to it too. So I kind of thought it would be pretty to kind of blend those two together. I've never done it before, but y'all know I like to experiment with different colors and different techniques and all that good stuff. So I'm going to start off by doing my gray. He'd also look beautiful just as a white bunny. But I kind of thought the pinks and the grays go so pretty together. So I'm just painting up my gray. I love this color of gray. It's a soft gray. I hope the colors show up vibrant for you guys. So are you all making plans for spring? Who started any seedlings yet? Anybody? My husband just dug out our, our whatever you call them, the UV lights or whatever they are for, for starting our seedlings. He dug those out on the weekend for me. Um, and I bought a few bags of soil. We really didn't have much in the stores yet for soil. But I'm going to be starting my favorite flowers, which are the zinnias, very, very soon. And probably my tomato plants, too. I want to get a few of those on a head start. So that's my hopes for this weekend. Good night, sweet pea. Miss Maya's just heading off to bed. So these bunnies, for those of you that are new, the wood cutouts can be found on our website. Um, I don't think I can drop a link from here. And I'm not sure if Brittany's on to do it, but um, the phone's a little far away from me. <laughs> and I forgot to grab the laptop again. But uh, 
I will put the link in at the top of the description afterwards for anyone that's looking for it. It's basically um, www.shabbychicvintagechicks.com. And that's where you'll find all our cutouts, our napkins, all our fun stuff. Okay. One of these days I've got to take all those little foil cap things off the, off my jars. I just kind of tear them open as I'm going and they're getting kind of messy. I need to clear those up. Hi, Tina. Hi, Izzy. Uh-oh. Somebody didn't clean the edge of her jar. Oh, there we go. And my fingers don't like to open jars very well. There we go. Yeah, I got it. Thanks, babe. So this is that beautiful, can you see? It's just kind of like a pinky gray. And I'm going to take him with my brush and I'm just going to blend it down the center but of course you guys can do it however you want I just love blending colors lately though grab that where did I put that brush oh there it is I'm gonna grab my one with the darker gray and I'm just gonna go in and blend them now because I don't want that harsh line difference in there Open that back up and pick up just a tiny bit more. Deborah's in the house. Everybody say hi to Deborah. Welcome, welcome. Tina, did you do a live today? Verilyn was saying she did a couple of them. She's showing me up. Christina, my daughter, um, I don't know if you all know this, but she's getting married in June. And so um, she was wedding dress shopping again today. I wasn't even feeling up to going and doing that today. That's how sluggish I was. But so we spent a good part of the day while I was filling orders, doing video chats from the bridal shop while she was showing me all the different dresses she was trying on. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> it's... Uh, you know, we tried so hard to get away from doing all these virtual things, and then here I am not feeling well and ending up doing a virtual one again. But it was nice that I could that I could still see what she was doing. And I think she is saying yes to a dress, which is kind of exciting. And it's going to be one of the ones that we saw actually last week. So although I missed the dress try-ons today in person, um, she she ended up that she liked the ones last week better so that is so exciting she's my first girl to get married well she's the first of any of my kids to get married so I might ramble on about that a little bit <laughs> little spritz of water I want a little bit more of that darkness on the outside edge there we go let me see how we're looking 
Yeah, that's pretty good. So we've got some, I hope you can see that, okay. But we've got some lighter gray and some darker gray that's kind of all swirling in together and, and mixing in. Hopefully that lighting's okay that you can see that. So I'll just go ahead and I'll close those up. And then I'm gonna go back and we'll start decoupaging that one bunny. <laughs> You're okay with the ramblings? <laughs> Thank you. They are, it's very exciting. And we've like, we've put it off because of the COVID thing. We haven't been out and about doing much wedding planning. So now it's like all of a sudden, like feel like we're just rushing, right? With three months to go. About three months, I guess. Um, so we're really just, you know, what about this? What about this? Um, she was excited today. She she was in one of the stores. She wasn't planning on it, but um, she found a chocolate fountain on sale. And so she called me and she's like, Mom, is that strange? Like, is it okay to do a chocolate fountain for this wedding? Like, we're not really that formal. And uh, I was like, no, you've always loved that kind of thing. So that was her. She was probably more excited about the chocolate fountain than she was a dress. <laughs> But that's kind of like how we are. So um, th that was fun. Um, we were checking it out, taking it out of the box virtually, you know. And uh, now we're talking about we're gonna have to give it a test run, right? Because you'd hate to, you'd hate to have a chocolate fountain that doesn't work that day. So, so we're having. It's funny though. Like you'd think we'd be more excited about the dress, but no, we're excited about a chocolate fountain. <laughs> okay. So let's set him out of the way and we're going to bring him over. Now, after you paint them, sometimes your little wood likes to, the fibers of it like to just stand up on end. So it's kind of nice to just give it a very light sanding and just knock them down into place. Show them who's boss. Get them all to lie down or get out. And then I just take a baby wipe and I just brush it off just to get rid of any of the dust. Okay, so this is the napkin I'm going to work with tonight. I did this napkin, let's see if I can reach without knocking everything over. But I use this napkin, oh, is Barb or Mavis on? When did we do this? We decoupaged a really ugly pig probably a little over a year ago, I'd say. We had a napkin club and uh, every month I'd send out, you know, 12 to 14 napkins and we do fun projects. Well, I picked up this really ugly pig. I don't even remember what color he was. I think he was green. He was a really ugly pig anyways. I picked him up at the Goodwill and I thought it'd be fun to decoupage him. So that's the napkin. I managed to get some more of them because I love this napkin. And so it's becoming one of my favorites around the house for projects. I've also done a clock with it. I'm not sure where it is right now because I put it away at Christmas time, but... Um, it's one of the napkins that I love. So to decoupage, for those of you that don't know how to do that, you've got to remove your backers. Those plain whites on the back, you don't need those. You just toss those away. Sometimes they pull off easy. Sometimes they don't. So this one here seems to be going okay. If for some reason you can't pull them apart like this, there's usually two. Sometimes there's only one, but there's usually two. But if you can't get them apart, the other trick that I do is I take a little bit of tape. I'm just going to grab some scotch tape here. Usually I use painter's tape, but I've got scotch tape handy. And which corner hasn't been done yet? This corner here. So I would take a tiny little edge of it and stick one on the back. And then, oh, I got it stuck to my finger here. And another little piece to the front. And then when you pull it apart, it just makes it so much easier. So if you're having problems separating your napkins, there's a little tip for you. And again, I just toss those aside. I use them for, I use them sometimes for building texture and things. If I want to decoupage to build texture. Um, look in the whole color, be there. I'm not sure what that means, Julie. <laughs> oh, the pig is cute. Thank you. Um, I forget what I was saying now. Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know. Totally lost that train of thought. Oh, it's 
It's going to be so pretty. I love, I'm not a huge floral person, but I just love, love, love that pattern. Okay, so I'm going to grab my Mod Podge. And this one is the matte. It is the one that I like most, but I wasn't sure which one I grabbed. And I'm just going to grab a paintbrush. And I'm going to give it a good coat of Mod Podge. And tonight we're going to do the ironing technique. It is the one that I like best because it gives me the smoothest finish. But if you like to apply wet and, you know, you have good luck with that, then feel free to do it that way, whatever works for you. But I just find by ironing it on, I do get the smoothest finished. So I put it on actually quite liberal. Quite thick. Quite generously. And make sure you get right to the edges because you don't want it to peel up. We added another napkin to the website today too. Um, I've been looking for this same napkin that we had in our napkin group, um, like I said, over a year ago. It's a beautiful nest one with the eggs. And we gave them out with our to all our club members and then quickly sold out of our extras. And these napkins were ones that my mom had bought me, I don't even know when, like years ago. And they were too pretty for a dirty face. <laughs> so I'd never even opened the package until we did our napkin group. And then, um, of course, we use them, we love them. I'll have to dig out some of the projects that we did with them. And, uh, and then we ran out of them. And I was kind of sad because I couldn't find them anywhere. Well, the other day while I was browsing vintage napkins, I found them and uh, I was so happy. So they're a little pricier, unfortunately, because they are vintage. And uh, But I did put them on the website for anyone that's looking for them. But they are beautiful for spring. They're the nest with the eggs in them. And I'll show you some of the cute projects when I go digging through all my Easter bin and find everything again. Okay, so I'm just going to slide him aside and let him dry, and I'm going to bring back my gray bunny. Or actually, maybe I'll go ahead and I'll paint the stands. Let's do that. So, the one stand, let's see, if it's going to be a pink bunny, maybe we'll paint it pink. And this one here, we'll go ahead and do it in the gray as well. And I'll go in with the darker of the gray. Yes, you made projects with that one too, Kathy. I think you were the one that bought my last couple of them. It was a beautiful napkin. So I was just like, I was like giddy when I found them again. It's like, oh my gosh. So. Cheryl, if you have, um, sorry, not Cheryl, um, Kathy, if you have any pictures of the projects you did with that napkin again, do you mind sending them to me? I know it's been a while, but um, I would love to share them as ideas on the website. I remembered you did some beautiful ones. There we go. So I'm just going to give it a nice coat of gray. I'm going to set it aside. Ooh, that matches my, uh, my countertop actually really well. So this is a two layer stand for these guys. Just gives it a little more stability and it's kind of a fun one slightly bigger than the other. And I'm gonna actually paint that little line. I don't usually, I kind of like that usually, but for this one, I'm gonna paint that, that cut line. Probably could have glued it together. Woo! Probably could have glued it together first to make it a little easier, but I didn't. There we go. I'm being messy tonight. You're not truly creative unless you make a mess, though, right? 
Paris themed napkin you ordered from Germany. Really gorgeous, but a bit pricey too. Yeah, that's what I mean. When you have to order them from Germany, which a lot of mine came from Germany. They get a little pricey because you have the exchange rates on them and then you have the shipping fees. But some of them are just so gorgeous that, you know, you got to do it. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Oh, yes, the jars. Yeah. But we also did, um, didn't you do one of the, the house cutouts too with that napkin? That's what I did. And I think Barb did that as well. I'm not sure what Mavis did, but I know Mavis was playing around with it too back then. Okay. So we've got our gray one. Making messes. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this one in pink. So this pink that I'm using is called Cherry Blossom. And it's kind of like a dusty rose kind of pink. And I think I'm actually going to lighten it up maybe with some of that um, Darling color too. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to go through a ton of paintbrushes it seems like tonight. So just get that out of the way. I'm going to load some of this on here. And there's another one. And I'll take some of the cherry blossom as well. And we'll just make a lighter pink. Ooh, that's a pretty one. But maybe just a touch more pink. Maybe I'll take one of my chocotour things. Drop a little more pink in there. There we go. Let's go ahead and we'll stick fast this one. Come out, come out where you are. All right, where's my little hedgehog? I'm gonna need a pin. We're just going to make sure we line up our holes. Just like so. And then we'll go ahead and we'll paint them. Oh yes, that is a beautiful pink. quicker that way and it's probably going to hold better because I don't have a layer of paint where the glue goes. Isn't that pretty? So I'm just painting the edges as I go. If I miss any I can go back and touch it up after but there we go. And if I'm doing that in pink, then I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab his ears and I'm going to do his ears for the gray bunny yeah. in that same pink. Because I want them to still match even though they're different patterns different colors. Coordinate, I guess. Just like that. And then we might as well go ahead and do their noses as well. So we've got two circles that are good size. Watch, I'm going to get covered with paint doing this. And my little board with tape would have been handy. <laughs> but I planned on Posca in it and then I'm 
you know, I've got this pink out, so why not? <laughs> Put it on a couple of vases as well. That would be awesome if you could send me the pics, yeah. Okay. And then maybe this guy's ears should be the same. I was going to do the more of a grayish white, but I think I like this pink so much. And if I change my mind, I just paint over it. Not a big deal. Okay, so we got our ears, we got our base, we got our noses. I'll get that out of the way. And I should have grabbed a jar. Oops. It's gonna need more water than that, but let's get some of these paint brushes up and out of the way. Sorry, causing a little earthquake. There we go. I'll leave that pink there just in case I need it after. Okay. So our Mod Podge is almost dry. I can see it's got a little glistening to it still you can tell it's still a little wet so I'm just going to heat it up a bit with my dryer and just dry that up so we can keep moving the process along Thursday you have your surgery oh laid up for six weeks you got lots of crafts lined up I was going to say I'll just have to tell Brittany to go live a lot that week I pass it off on to Brady, eh? Just to keep you entertained, you know. It's the least she could do. <laughs> Did you all see her live yesterday? I slept through them, and I still haven't had a chance to watch them. I was planning on doing that while I was doing my, uh, my crafts today, but then Chrissy and I were having too much fun with wedding dresses and stuff. What kind of paint do I use? This is Country Chic Paint. We have it on the website. Um, I have the great big jars that I use here because I'm crafting all the time, but they actually come in, I don't know if you can see them back there, can you see those? They actually come in a nice little four ounce size, which does a lot of projects. Um, and it's, it's a good size because then you're not having, you know, a hundred, you know, little cans or big cans, I mean. If I had realized when I first started with this paint, exactly how far it went I probably wouldn't have opened a big one I would have went with just the smalls other than white white I I love having in a big one because I use it all the time but uh, I can't even talk country chic paint it's a chalk mineral paint so it's got a um, it's got a chalky finish and it's easy to distress and stuff if you like to distress um, I like the matte finish on it but it's also nice because it's got a built-in top coat. So unless you're putting it outside, you don't have to top coat this. So I'm gonna take my napkin and I'm gonna just lie it over top. I'm wondering, can I squeeze them in a little better this way? Because that, that part there is gonna go in the base. No, he doesn't quite fit like that unless I kind of angle him, let's see. I don't want to use up the whole napkin unless I have to. Yep, that'll work. Okay, so now that the Mod Podge layer is dry, I set my napkin over top, I grab a piece of parchment paper, and I lie that over top, and then I've got my iron, just my regular, you know, as if I was going to iron clothes, which I would never do anymore. <laughs> Not unless I had to. <laughs> And I just run that over it. And what that's going to do is it's going to heat up the Mod Podge. And it's going to adhere that napkin on there beautifully. Usually without any wrinkles. So let's hope, hope, hope that I have it nicely on there. Just like so. 
just kind of run your fingers over it and see if you need to heat up any other spots a little bit. I missed a tiny bit on that flower bum. Or maybe a tiny bit on that seam there. Not a seam, the fold. There we go. And I'm going to shut that off before I burn myself with it. It wouldn't be the first time during a live. Let's set that out of the way. So now that I've got my napkin on there and it is beautiful and smooth, I'm just going to let it cool for a second. And then I'm going to go around and just with my sanding sponge, I'm going to go in a swiping motion from up to down. Don't go back and forth because you'll tear your napkin. But I find this to be easier because my fingers don't work that well anymore. Cutting a pattern in a napkin doesn't always work that well for me. So I find this way to be super easy. And there's no more fussy cutting around. Now there is a burn method too, which we did try when we had the napkin club. Um, and I find sometimes it works well, and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> it's fun, but when I know that I want a piece to turn out perfectly, it's it's not something that I, I enjoy doing because it makes me very nervous because sometimes it does leave that singe mark. And uh, it's fun, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't always turn out perfectly for me. For this one like nine out of 10 times, it's perfect. With nice crisp corners. And... So just working my way around. Now this bottom little edge here, you can see that it's not lined up perfectly and I'm okay with that. I knew that when I lied it down that it wasn't going to be. Um, and I'm totally okay with that because it's going to sink down into the stand. So I'm just going around and removing any little gluey edges that are hanging. But a very crisp and very smooth finish on that. Okay. All right. So next we're going to have to put a top coat of Mod Podge over top of this. And I tossed my Mod Podge brush already into the water, so I'm going to grab another one. It's a good thing I love doing cleanup, right? <laughs> you want to try the burning? It's fun, but it doesn't always work out perfectly for me. So I work from the center out just to make sure it's not going to bubble. And to be totally honest, if I wasn't doing a live, I probably would set this aside and walk away from it for the night and totally let it do its thing of, um, you know, adhering that napkin down. And then there would be less chance of bubbles. But because we're on a live and nobody wants to wait till tomorrow to see the end results. <laughs> and to be honest, I'm kind of impatient sometimes too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it. But when you are doing it and it's still fresh, make sure you're working from the center out. Just doing a nice even coat. But make sure you drag it all the way to the corners because you want those edges to really stay stuck down well. And then I just smooth it out a bit. And then I'm going to 
work my way up the ears. Isn't that such a pretty napkin? It screams spring, summer. Very shabby chic. You can see how bright and vibrant those flowers are on there. Well, until I cover it up with Mod Podge, until it dries, right? But that's because of the white napkin underneath. If I would have done it on a wood tone, it wouldn't be so crisp. Okay, so I'm just going to slide that out of the way. Let him dry up a bit. And I'm going to grab my gray bunny again. And we're going to go ahead and start assembling my gray bunny. So I'm going to grab, there it is, my stick fast glue. And I'm going to apply his ears. I'm going to do a little stick fast. And I'm going to do a little of the Elaine's at the same time. The Elaine's gives it a long, good hold that um, stick fast does usually, except for when there's paint underneath, it doesn't always. So, I'm just going to stick my little ear in there. But the stick fast gives it the immediate hold that I'm looking for. I might have missed a comment there. I see Deborah saying, yes, I saw your comment. I might have missed a comment, and I'm sorry. It's because I'm busy crafting, and to be honest, I'm not good at seeing far away. But I do go back and I read the comments afterwards. I love them. Going back down to part-time at work? You have to say no. You work in a very busy place, so yeah, you need to take care of yourself too. As long as you know financially you can handle, I think, you know, it's kind of nice to um, work to live, not live to work. Not saying that's what you do, but I mean in general. Um, over the past couple of years, my husband and I have talked about that a lot, that, you know, we go through life and it's work, 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 you know, trying to always get ahead. And then sometimes you realize you're just, you know, you're not, you're not working to live anymore. You're living to work when you're there all the time and you know, you're missing out on so much going on in life in general. Yeah. They're killing you with working overtime. Oh, yes, I can, I, I hear you. I'm fortunate to be working from home now. Thank goodness. Okay, I'm going to go in with these little sponges that, you know, I really don't like that much because I hate the cleanup part of it. But I have them, so I'm going to use them, but they're not my highly recommended little thing, okay? I've seen also that they have them in Michael's now. And the reason I don't like them, they work great, I just hate the cleanup of them. But because I own them, I'm going to use them. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my pink roses. And the reason I'm doing it with this instead of with um, a paintbrush is because I don't want it to drip down into all my, my little designs. And I was going to use a Posca, but I don't have that same shade of pink in Posca. But Poscas do make it a whole lot easier. I'm going to grab my other one as well. I'm going to show you in a minute though because I'm going to do the green leaves in Posca. This is also a lot quicker than brushing it on. Okay. So there they are. The flower part I've done in pink on both of them. And I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to grab my green Posca. Yes, you need to take care of you. Exactly. And I'm just going to do my leaf area with the Posca. Now that I play with these Poscas all the time, um, I'm kind of like, how did I survive with them? <laughs> they are really one of my essentials of crafting. And when I first got them, I was like, oh my gosh, it's not my jam, but oh. Now I just don't know how I would survive without them. 
Who else feels like that about their Posca pens? Are you like, I am so open to a whole new world of creating since I got into them? I should have shares in them. I love them so much. So there we go. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to do the same to my gray bunny flower. So any ideas, what would you like me to do for my next live? I'm open to suggestions now because I'm kind of getting overwhelmed with all the possibilities of what I could be doing <laughs> because we have so many fun projects on the website. Is there any particular ones that you are dying to see done live that I can either get Brittany to do or I could do? What ones are you dying to see live? You know we can't do them all. There's just no time. But Tina loves her markers. And Deborah's loving hers too. Yeah, they are awesome. Yeah. Oh, this little thing here. They're called daubers. And it's basically like a Crayola marker cap. That's what they remind me of. And they've got a sponge on the end. Um, they fit nicely on your finger, so it's fun to do. But washing them is a bit of a bugger. And um, because if you soak them, the, they come off. It's kind of like just held on there by double face tape. And I find it's really hard to squeeze all the color out of them. So they're not my favorite thing. Like this one's been washed several times. And you can see it's, it's stained that color. But sometimes when they're stained a color and then I go to use white, I find that it's still bleeding out some of those, some of the tint. So they're not my favorite item, but they are handy and convenient but I don't think I would buy them again. I would go back to using a makeup sponge. Love them all. The new round of owls. Yes, I love those ones. And actually, I had it sitting there. I meant to do it at Easter, but I just kind of forgot. I even forgot to put it on the website. I had it already cut out. And then the other day I was going through stuff. I think Barb had mentioned to me, that she wanted something, she was like wondering if we were going to do owls. And I was like, yeah, I have one on the website. And then I went to look for the link and I was like, oh, I forgot to put it on the website. But I can't take them all. I know, right? <laughs> okay, you go browse. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for trying to catch me as often as you can. Yeah, I, I, I know you just have a life too. Trust me. And the same way, I love watching all your lives too, everybody. But like, I just, you know, I can't fill the orders and watch them all. <laughs> okay. So these just glue right on. Are we dry yet? Yeah, we're pretty close. So these are going to glue on just like that in the corners. He's going to need his ears. So let's see. I'm thinking I want to do some shading on here. Because, you know, I just like to shade too much. Um, let's go in with some of that light pink darling again. I'm going to do a little more shading in his ears. So I'm just going to pick up the tiniest bit and I'm going to blend it in with this almost drying pink. Let's see what I can come up with. Ooh, yeah, I'm going to dry brush it on there. So I'm going to offload as much as I can. And I'm just going to dry brush that light pink in there. Okay, it's a little wetter than a dry brush mark, but. I'm blending with a baby wipe. And then I'm 
taking some of the blended stuff back off the edges just by pressing down a little harder. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see the two different shades going on there now? Just kind of softened it up a little bit. Bunny bunny, come back here. Yeah, I like that better. Just not quite as harsh of a pink. So let's do his little ear as well. All right, so now we can glue them together and then put their little faces on. We're almost done. Okay, so I'm gonna use stick fast glue. And I love how thin it comes out. Um, if you're buying stick fast glue, guys, first of all, we have some on the website again. We just got our order in this week. Um, they probably won't last long because we could only get a dozen in. And I don't know when we're gonna get another one. Um, that's all he had to send me. Shortage supply, I guess. I don't have to cover every one of the little lines, but you definitely want to get the outside ones. But if you're ordering from someone else, make sure you don't buy the thin one. I've been there, done that. It is a hot mess. You definitely don't want thin stick fast. You'll want the thick one. Medium's not bad, but thick one is the best. Especially for little pieces like this. That little bit of gluing myself to it is a lot worse when I use thin. <laughs> so just line it up, drop it on. Whoops, forgot that his ears weren't glued on. But isn't that pretty? I love how it's just the outline. Now, if you wanted to, you could go in there with a thin paintbrush and you could paint your background of your flowers like that. Whatever works for you. Did Deborah come back and tell us what she's thinking? What was she thinking about for the next live? So far we're saying owl round. Oh, you took the day off for bereavement leave, okay. You will be in our thoughts and prayers, sweetie, while you deal with that. Okay. A little bit of glue hanging there. This guy's not glued on yet. Try not to glue myself to it. It would also be really pretty if you just wanted to do your flowers in white. They would look gorgeous on it as well. There we go. Okay. So then we have the cute little faces. <laughs> and when I say they're cute little faces, they're kind of funny 
because you have heart. Uh, with it comes a big eyeball, a little eyeball, and a nose. Now, if you want, you can put a little bit of oils on one and both big eyeballs on the other. But I'm actually going to do it with one big one and one small one. And what it's going to do is kind of give you that direction that he's looking. So you're going to see the one that's turned away would be a smaller eye than the one that's closer to you. So you kind of use them to build that that character of them, right? And it's funny how... Oops. This. You can kind of make little faces, right? Like you can see he's kind of looking more off to the side. Or... You know, you could bring it more straight on that he's turned and looking a little more directly at you. Oops, don't lose them. But it's kind of, it's it's just, it's humorous to me how three little dots on a chubby bunny could almost give you expression. Does that make sense? <laughs> I found it quite weird when I was playing with it. And I was like, I never really thought about how just three dots can make so much of a difference just in the way you're positioning them. So let's say I put his... And once it's down, it's down, right? So I'm going to go something like this. There's no wrong way, I don't think, to doing it. And he's going to be looking kind of upwards just by tilting it a different way it almost makes them look like you've changed so much of them and there's his little nose so see what i mean how now he's kind of looking upwards just by the angle that you put the eyeballs it's weird maybe it's maybe it's not that big of a deal to you guys maybe you're like yeah yeah we know that but to me i just i found that to be quite amazing how Three little dots can make such a difference. So there he is with his little black peepers. And then I'll come over and I'll do the same on my decoupaged bunny. So I'm going to just kind of pick a spot for his nose. And maybe this one will make him look downwards more. Just moving them around, seeing where, what facial expression I'd like from them. See how his face is a little more off to the edge. Is anyone else wowed by that? <laughs> it's something that I never realized until I'd done these guys. That glue is still wet and it's sliding while I'm trying to paint. So I'm daubing instead of painting him. Like instead of brushing it on or coloring it on. But there we go. Okay. So, he could be done, but I'm not sure yet. If you do paint down your bowl and he's not fitting in properly, just grab yourself a nail file. Usually it's right in the
Isn't he cute? I think they're so cute. Hi, Karen. Okay, so he still needs a facial expression in his eyes, so. <clears throat> I'm going to, let's see, he's looking kind of downwards. So, oops, I need something to daub it on. That white's got a little black on the end from last time I used it, I guess. There we go. I'm going to grab my glasses because I'm working on such a tiny little spot here. There we go. That's better. Now I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Have a design on his nose. Might come in. Do I want to do it on his ears? I don't like it after. I can always color over it, but. That's kind of cute. Okay, now can I do the same design? I don't want to take that base off again. So I'm doing a few dots, a few squiggles, just kind of whatever suits your fancy. And I can't see when I look up there, but so just some little squiggles in there just to give it a little character. You see his eyeballs? I kind of put white underneath. And then he needs some whiskers. So my white isn't going to show up for whiskers. So I'm going to grab my um, slate gray, I think this one's called. Yeah, slate gray. And I'm Are they cute? I think he's really cute. I don't think he needs much else. I think that's, I think he is just about perfect. I'm kind of torn about if I'd like to go in there with a paintbrush and just kind of put some green in the leaves. That I'm not sure about. What do you think? Should he have his leaves filled in or should we just leave it like that? I think he's kind of pretty just like that. I might just leave it. Either way. <laughs> oh no. I pink is almost identical to my pink and stuff. No wonder I like it. <laughs> oh, it never even clicked in until then. Okay, now let's do the same with this guy here. I'm going to do the slate gray wiggly whiskers. And then I think he needs some little dots in his eyeballs. I'm not even going to do the whole kind of like shading underneath like I did. do I wanna let's see I 
<gasps> no, I know what I want to do differently. <gasps> oh my gosh, I gotta fix that. Okay. I was doing little like swoops to make it look like hair, but then I realized what I wanted differently. I need the, I need that brighter pink. I gotta fix this up. Can I match my pink? Do I have enough pink left to match? Can I get that Posca off there? Ooh, yes. So this is the really fine tip one. This is a 0.7. So it's got like a fountain pen kind of tip on it. And it's fun for doing the fine detail. So this guy, he has like little stitches. Can you see that okay? I think that's super cute on him. Now, I've got to turn so I don't stick my hand back in the wet spots. I can't wait to see how you guys do these. Because I think everybody will have a little different take on them, right? But it's kind of that hand-sewn look around his ears. Isn't that cute? I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. And he is done. Winner, winner. You know what else you could do? If you wanted to make him a little more or primitive. Did I not line that up well? Jeepers Creepers. I didn't. That's too funny. I was freaking out that it wasn't lined up right and it wasn't even good. slide this card on and then I'm sure it's lined up <laughs> how, how as awesome is that there's my fun tip of the day and I just thought of it on the on the spot he's right in there right yeah okay just make sure he's stuck down Still pops in and out. Perfect. What do you think? Isn't he cute? I think they're so cute. Love, love, love them. So there's my bunnies. And then if we had one of those cute carrot tags, would be so cute with this too. But you don't like sinus headaches. I miss something. I don't like them any either. I don't think anybody does. Who's got the sinus headache? <laughs> I missed it. Thank you for all the compliments. He did. They did turn out cute. And I can't wait to see what you guys do with them too. Oh, they are so sweet. They're going on my shelf in the dining room, I think. I love, love, love them. So there they are. <laughs> all right guys i hope you enjoyed this project um if you have any questions of course put them in the comments i do go back and i check them often um or you can just pop a message over to me but i hope you enjoyed this one tonight and uh sweet dreams be creative and i hope to see you all what's tomorrow tomorrow's tuesday i hope to see you again tomorrow um because i have so many projects to do it's going to be so much fun I love the Easter season. We're going to have so much fun with this. You'll have to watch from the beginning. Start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. Um, 
we have a lot more projects coming out too, guys. My list is endless. I probably won't even get them all on the website this Easter um, because I have a huge list of things I want to do. But um, I just keep picking favorites. Just keep going through my list. And I'm like, okay, I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. All right, guys, sweet dreams, love yous, be creative, and thank you so much for watching. Okay, um, let's see. I don't know if it'll let me type in here. Nope, it probably won't. Okay, it's not going to let me type in here. So I will go ahead and I will put it in the comments up above, um, the link to the website. And also, um, you all know that there is, scroll down on the page, there's a little thing that says, um, if you'd like to know about our notifications, about when we're going live, um, to type live to it. And then we send you out a text. It's our group text. Um, and so we send it out to everybody just saying when we're going live, just in case Facebook doesn't give you the notifications, okay? So I will talk to you soon. Um, thank you. <laughs> Brittany's on! <laughs> um, thank you so much, Brittany. I thought you'd be sleeping by now. Thank you so, so much. Okay, guys. Sweet dreams, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.